hey, hope you enjoyed that crazy little demo. Uh, I figured the playthrough itself doesn't really showcase what exactly GGD Slammers is. So here's my session here. I'll run you through what's going on. Um, essentially, Slammers are one shot. So you get 22 kick samples and 23 snare samples, I believe. A mixture of close and room mics for various kicks. And there's some really interesting ones in there. First of all, I'll just go through what my drums sound like before any slammers or one shots. So, something like this. So yeah, this is just the P5 library with everything engaged, the P4, with just the shells minus this Rackdom because we've only got three here. And then also weirdly, one kit one to pop punk, which isn't really doing much, but I guess the toms are adding some beef. Anyway, that's all routed out in here. I'm not gonna go through all my processing uh, for two reasons. There's a lot. Uh, and also it's not entirely mine. Uh, this, this guy called Mix Ready Drums, who does drum templates for various DAWs and I've been using this one for years. It's, I think it's called the Offering for the P4 library. It's like a sleep token template. So I've just taken that and like adapted it to be my own at this stage. The structure of it is essentially still his. So if you want this sort of sound, definitely check out Mix Ready Drums and then I'll play it all together. That's with, without. So as you might be able to hear, there's a lot of ring on that <laughs> snare sample, which is what I was going for. I was trying to really, you know, assault your eardrums with that kind of like similar to the latest Knock Loose record. That's kind of the sound I was going for. So I'll run you through what's going on with these samples. First of all, these kick samples really aren't doing much because I was pretty happy with the kick sound I had. But this first one I layered was this thud and I took the attack away <laughs> so it's kind of just noise and then gave it some more bass and saturation that layered in with all the kicks sounds like this if I take it away it's a little bit cleaner it's not really doing much at all but the whole kind of idea of this for me was to just you know make everything as full on as possible and yeah just really push everything to the max so that's kind of what i was going for with that and then we've got this one which is just a room kick sample i believe so on its own it sounds like this yeah i pretty much tax at zero and then just did some slight eq so yeah that's going into the room bus And now's where it gets fun. This is the <laughs> this is the pingy snare you heard. This is what it sounds like. I took the attack off. I think yeah, I didn't really need it. I just wanted that decay. Um, and I think yeah, I pitched it down three semitones. So originally it was this, but I tuned it to I think the main note is D now, which is what I'm tuned to uh, double drop D. So it kind of fits nicely. And then I compress the crap out of it and EQ'd these notes out. I wasn't liking, I don't really know what the harmonics, what the harmonics do in a snare drum, but it sounded like it was a B flat major chord and I wanted the D and I didn't want the other notes. So <laughs> I just took them out around there uh, and then saturated. Which isn't doing a whole lot, but paired with the snare, very noticeable difference. And I love that sound. This is the second snare sample I laid, which is a room sample. I took the attack away a bit because I just wanted that 
ring. Again, compress the crap out of it. Um, and then I found this random reverb plugin, uh, which occasionally produces noise because I've got an expired license, but I kind of like that sound. So this one's going just to the room bus and I'm just cutting out some high end. Anyway, I rendered that here so the hissing didn't get in the way. And this is what they sound like together. So my idea with this was I wanted this really pingy snare, um, but I didn't want it the whole time. I wanted it to kind of be introduced at the start and then come in for the tempo change or metric modulation at the end. Uh, so I just ducked the volume. Yeah, I just ducked the volume for this, uh, this middle section. And this room snare is the one that's going the whole time. And then the pingy snare comes back. Anyway, very over-the-top sound, not something you would usually go for, but I think it sounds cool in this context. At least I like it. I'll quickly go over what else is in, what else is going in here. I've got, what is this one? Nocturnal bass for the bass. Yeah. So I, I really like the sound of this in drop D. So this is why I chose this. My go-to is Umansky bass usually, but... This one, yeah, this one doesn't really sound, have that much clarity, any lower than drop D from my experience. So that's going to these two tracks, Parallax and... Parallax is amazing, I use that on every, every, bass, every bass track ever. And this twang track, which isn't really doing much, but it's kind of there in case you want DI twang, you can automate the volume to bring it in. And then that's going into compression, Saturation, um, EQ to get some annoying frequencies out, and squashing the dynamics even more. And then the guitars are absolutely disgusting, almost indistinguishable. I mean, unidentifiable, <laughs> whatever. Ridiculous. Almost just sounds like white noise. <coughs> so that's my six string Cerberus that was in the video uh, through an, uh, Boss HM2 <laughs> with everything on full and then into Archetype Nolly. After I had to put a gate before Archetype Nolly because this gate wasn't enough to get rid of the hiss. And the gain's on zero, <laughs> bass is on zero. I, these amp settings are so weird, but it's just what I had to do to make it work well, in my opinion. Because if you... There's just no clarity there. I kind of regret using it, well, at least using it at this lower tuning, because it sounds... The HM2 sounds really cool for this part, in my opinion. Which is an octave higher than the drop that comes in there. Bit of a weird EQ curve on the guitar, but it's it's in the same octave as the bass, so I'm kind of treating it <laughs> similarly. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got <laughs> synth bass, which is not something you'd usually do, but since it's a MIDI bass, it's technically always in tune, so you can double it with whatever you want. All these three are going to this low strings bus, which is kind of what I send bass or low tune guitars to to sidechain the kick drum piece. so really massive sound there <laughs> oh, thanks <laughs> anyway this is what's happening when the kick drum hits anyway just making some room for the kick at about 70 hertz What else is there? Not much to this uh, project, but this is kind of just there to not really be heard, just felt, I guess, just to add some more energy. And then I think the last thing is just the effects, which are, yeah, I, <laughs> I crushed this. I put it through flatline. 
I just wanted like an insane bass. Beat. Actually, I'll play the effects and the drums together. It sounds pretty massive. Especially with this. So over the top. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this or if you got something useful out of it. Um, I'm by no means a professional mix engineer, producer, whatever. I'm just in my bedroom doing shit. But yeah, let me know if this was useful. I might make more videos like this in the future, but subscribe if you're new. <laughs> anyway, this is my first time doing this shit, if you can't tell.